Welcome to the Sportlight Podcast for parents, coaches, and athletes. The Sportlight refers to the time in an athlete's life when they have increased ability to affect the culture around them and the increased opportunity to learn life's lessons through sports. This podcast aims to help parents and coaches capitalize on their athletes' precious time in the Sportlight. The Sportlight Podcast is brought to you by Especially for Athletes program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sportlight Podcast. We're pleased to be joined today by Tyler Haas. How are you, Tyler? I'm great. How are you guys? We're, we're doing good. Really good. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on with us, Tyler. And we've got a bunch of stuff we want to throw at you. <laughs> so Let's go. I'm ready. Awesome. So just for those who may not know who Tyler is, most will, but uh, played at Lone Peak High School. Or are you still the all-time leading scorer at Lone Peak High School, Tyler, or has someone got you? You know, I, I think in my mind I still am, but I think <laughs> there's been a few, few other good players to come through there, and I think yeah. they, they beat me. So, uh, Darn it. Well, uh, two-time Utah Mr. Basketball, Gatorade Player of the Year, in Utah and then went to BYU and had a great career there at BYU. And I know you're still the all-time leading scorer at, at Brigham Young University. Uh, West Coast Conference Men's Player of the Year uh, one year and just had a great career and then went on and did some professional basketball, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Tyler? That's right. Yeah, played uh, overseas in, uh, in Spain and three different spots there and, and in Poland and Spent some time in Italy and Canada, and so it was, it was awesome. I had a great adventure traveling the world. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, well, one of the things, Tyler, when we uh, have people on who've achieved some of the things that you've achieved, we get to meet with a lot of high school athletes and with parents and with coaches that listen to this podcast. We think there's a lot of people who would love to be great at whatever they do. And sometimes they're just a little bit naive to the price that needs to be paid in order to achieve what they want to achieve in their life. And we've seen some of the other things that you've done, uh, some videos that have been made about you and, and things like that. But I would just wonder, what do you have to say to people who really would love to be great, whether it's sports or in business or in life? What have you learned through playing basketball about the price of of achieving greatness and achieving your goals? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, I think this is something that everyone can relate to no matter what uh, what you're chasing in life. If, if it's sports or academics or something in business or anything, um, you know, to be successful and to win, there there's a price that has to be paid, right? And, you know, it there's another saying that it, it takes what it takes right and so i don't know i and i've i've had to learn i haven't been perfect at that uh in my life i i've learned the hard way a couple of times that you know thinking that maybe you're better than you are or you know thinking you can walk into a gym and and beat a team um but the times when uh you know, my, my preparation met opportunity, um, really has, those were some special moments when, when I did put in the right preparation and I did, um, put in the right work and sacrifice the right way. Um, and, and then the right opportunity presented itself and I was ready for it, you know? Right. And so you know, my my high school coach that that was the formula he always preached is hey we're, we're when preparation meets opportunity that's when special things happen and so um, I, I've tried to live by that um, definitely haven't been perfect but I think in whatever you're chasing in life it's about it's about paying that price and and wanting it you gotta you gotta want success and want to win um, more than the the guy next to you that's that's chasing the same thing right and so i don't know those those were that's kind of been my approach and still fine tuning those things and trying to trying to get better every day um at, at chasing chasing that next win well and, and to that point tyler share with us some of the um habits or routines that you 
maybe implemented. Uh, and, and I don't know if you started, you know, really buckling down your your habits and routines in junior high or high school, or was there a time where you realized, okay, I'm I'm pretty good. I think I have a a chance here. Um, and 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 when that was, what what would a typical morning or day or afternoon look like as far as as preparation for you that you think might might help a, a young man or woman listening to this? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I, I remember being in, you know, fifth or fifth or sixth grade, I went to a BRE basketball camp and, um, and came out of it with, I, I think I was the MVP of the camp. And it was the first time that, you know, I had put in some, some work and started getting in the gym, shooting in the backyard, just doing some simple things. And it was kind of the first time where I was like, wow, like I, I, I was the MVP of the camp. I I've got a chance to be pretty good. And, and that success and motivation kind of became addicting to me. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to put together a plan because I, I want to do it again. I want to replicate this. And so I, you know, it, it, and it changed year to year, but, um, you know, from sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was, I was shooting a couple hours in the morning and, you know, there were some days where I was trying to put up 500 shots. There were some days I was trying to put up 750 shots, you know, and I, I'd write them out. I had a journal. I would keep track of, you know, what I was, how many, I was, how many shots I was making on a certain drill and and then I try and beat it the next morning. Um, so, but I, so I'm I'm getting sidetracked here. But I, I I'd shoot for two hours. I'd go home, eat breakfast, um, you know, hang out, do my chores, and, and then I'd go back to the gym and I dribble. I dribble for an hour. I had a a big routine, a dribbling routine, and then I try and get uh, try and get guys together in the afternoon and play one on one, two on two three on three. And, um, and, and then you, when I got into high school, I, I added in, you know, lifting in the afternoon. And so by, you know, you get to the end of a day and you, you, you put in, you know, five, six hours of, of work. And, um, I think the, those hours in the gym just started compounding over and over. And, that really the success I saw became addicting and made me want to do more and, and find areas where I could really improve and, and get better. And so, um, it, it those, that, that, that was the fun part, the journey of trying to figure out, Hey, how can I, how can I get to the next level? How can I, how can I get better? And, and really that fueled my, my confidence in games and on the court and on my teams. I love the fact that you, it's the first time I've heard of a, maybe it happens more than I know, but of a junior high or gosh, you might've even been elementary age, but junior high age kid journaling his workouts. That's something you you ask kids to do all the time. And usually they don't understand the importance of that, but you were doing that at a young age, which means you weren't just working hard, but you were working smart. And I think there's a difference to that. I wonder if you've seen any of that maybe playing professionally where you, my guess is you probably in college and playing professionally saw some really gifted athletes, or maybe you saw some, some athletes that, that had had what it took, but maybe didn't, uh, didn't have a plan or didn't work smart. You know, what, what would you say to the, to the importance of, of maybe sometimes working smarter than necessarily harder? Yeah, I mean, you you see those guys all the time, right? The guys that are super, super talented that um, are, you know, sometimes going through the motions, doing the bare minimum and feeling like, you know, they show up 10 minutes before practice and and they work hard in practice, but then they they leave right after, you know, or they they get some guys together to play pickup and they're the best guy on the floor, but they're not putting in any, any time outside of that, right. To work on their game. And I I've seen it. I've, I've seen it at every level guys that you're like, wow, that guy has all the tools, all the, all the things to be a great player, but 
they never quite take that jump. And and I think it's I think it's because of, you know, their their mindset and and um how how much they're willing to work, how hungry they are uh to be successful. Like the that mindset it that really is is the difference between those guys that have the talent and um are just kind of going through the motions and the guys that are really special are the guys that have have the talent, have the size, and they're the guys that are getting there early. And you know, at, at the pro level, it was it was as much about yeah, working smart, yeah, you know, taking care of your body, putting in, you know, knowing knowing your role on your team to know okay, these are the shots I'm going to get, and this is what I'm going to work on so I can be ready when coach calls my number. Right. And, and laying out a plan that way. Um, but yeah, working smart, putting together a plan and then just, just working your plan. Um, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything complicated about that formula right there, you know, figure out, figure out your role and lay out a plan and then be consistent with it. You know, anyone can work hard for, a couple of days um but it's hard to hard to work consistently uh because there there are definitely those days you guys know there are days where you don't feel like you don't feel like getting up and getting to the gym and um those are the days that you you have to make yourself yeah for sure tyler i one of the things that came to mind as you were saying that we had Allie Bills on. I don't know if you know Allie. Um, she, yeah, I know Allie. Awesome. She's a great and a great supporter of the program. And But she's talked often about how youth today maybe play too many games because there's so many leagues to play in. And so they're constantly playing games and that's crowding out the time that it takes to really perfect their craft and to do some of the things that you're talking about, you know, the, an hour of dribbling and you had a dribbling routine that you did and then knowing roles and where you're going to get your shots and practicing those shots. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that for parents and coaches in regard to not spending so much time playing games that you don't have time to do that repetitive, uh, you know, the, the boring consistency that it takes to really master a craft and improve skills. Yeah, I think, I think there's a balance, right. Um, and, and definitely nowadays there, there are kids that get way out, way out of balance, um, with playing too many games and, um, and, and thinking that's going to, you know, take their game to the next level. I've always, I've always thought um, the work needs to come first uh, individually and you got to get in the gym. You gotta, there's no substitute for getting shots up or work, you know, working on your craft. And yeah, it, sometimes it, it is boring. Right. But um, you know, I heard coach Pope the other day talking about fundamentals and, and the basics and how uh, he's, he f- tells his guys all the time, we can't get bored with the basics. You got to, got to keep doing the little things every single day. Cause all those things add up. So I, I don't know my, my advice though, the way that we kind of did it growing up, we, we played a lot of games um, for sure, but we, we would pick, we pick, I don't know, four, three, four, five tournaments uh, in a summer and those would be our tournaments and everything outside of that was, was individual work. And the games became the testing ground for, for everything we were working on. Right. We were trying to grow our game and expound it. I, I was always a lot taller than most kids growing up. And so naturally I kind of gravitated towards the blocks and they, um, you know, I knew I wasn't going to be a seven footer. I, I, I wish I, I would have been, <laughs> I, 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 that was always my goal. D six, eight didn't quite get there, but, uh, I, um, 
the the games became my testing ground to to work on my guard skills and to yeah work on work on coming off a ball screen work on coming off a down screen work on my footwork on the perimeter work on my transition in ball handling stuff like everything i was working on uh individually at my at my church gym i was trying to implement into the games right and i i think that's where kids can get a little off track is where you're not you're not working on certain skills to grow your game you're just playing games and so really it it kind of your your skill level plateaus right because you're there's no there's no time you're not giving yourself any time to to improve and so um i don't know that that formula always helped helped me um and and i was I, it, it takes a lot of focus to to try and add something to your game i'm going to try and use this and uh, but it, it it definitely helped well i know tyler to to that point with the the athletes that i coach and that i especially in the, you know, the individual position training work that I do with kids is I will get kids or dads all the time that will, that will want, you know, to, to get together and to work on things. But usually the first thing that happens is I'll be sent a highlight film or something of the kid or the dad or, or whomever the kid will tell me, you know, all of the good things that they do and which is great. It, it's, but I, Sometimes I, uh, I I squash that pretty quick when I say I you know we're, we're we need to work on the things you don't do well. So what I would prefer to see is a a low light film. I'd rather see the film of the mistakes and the errors and the you know the miscues and dive into working on that. But that's hard because most of us when we go to the gym and I remember um, you know, playing in, in, in junior high and and in high school basketball, doing the same thing, you know, you go to the gym and if you, if you really are a a good, you know, outside shooter that I'd find myself doing drills that I could see the ball go in the hoop because I wanted to, you know, feel good about myself when what I should have been doing was, you know, working on my left hand more working on something that was maybe a, a weakness in my game. So, you know, I, I would, to your point there on, when you're getting out there and, and training and journaling and, and, and working hard, you know, to make sure that, uh, cause in games, you don't, you, in games, you're not going to focus on your, most kids aren't going to focus on their weaknesses. If you don't have a strong off hand, you're not going to go dribble with your off hand much in a, in a basketball game. Cause you, yep. you, you want to get to the hoop, right? So, um, your, your, your strengths get emphasized in the games and your weaknesses get hidden, and uh, you know that eventually a good coach or a good opposing player finds that out and he attacks those weaknesses. Um, so, you know, real quick to that point, you know, what are your thoughts on when you practice practicing on the the weaknesses versus getting caught up doing the fun things? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, I think it's hard to stare your you know, stare yourself in the mirror and say, what are my weaknesses? Like that, that's a really hard thing to do. Um, Because everyone, you know, everyone wants to be told that they're doing a good job and that, you know, they want to, they want to highlight their strengths. I think that's, that's natural in everyone. Um, But great players, they, they're looking, they're hungry, they're, there's no, they have no shame in, in trying to find what those weaknesses are. Right. You know, I, I just finished uh, a book by Tim Grover um, winning. Uh, he, he was Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan's trainer. And he said that was, that was one characteristic that both of those guys had. I mean, two, arguably the, the two greatest basketball players ever and to the end of their career, they were fighting so hungry to to just get point zero zero one percent better and better that day, and trying to find find out why something worked and why something didn't work and why you know why why did we get to the end of the game and only had five points and two rebounds and we played twenty minutes like how we 
there there's storylines in everyone's everyone's career and this this goes outside of sports right this is this is a life principle why it, it's hard to do in whatever profession you're in to to say why why is this working why is this not working where where are my weaknesses and then and and then putting together a plan to attack it and and going and you know asking the guy that's come before you how how can i how can i get better this is something i'm trying to improve on and i mean the the grit and hunger has to be there and can't be ashamed you gotta be you gotta be open and vulnerable and um and those are the guys that that you know take those big big steps forward but I mean, to your point, Dustin, it is, it's hard. It's hard to, to be open and, and vulnerable that way. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Tyler, one of the things I just, I don't even need you to comment on this. I just, to reflect with Dustin, we've had Ty Detmer, Eric Weddle, you know, we've had a number of great athletes, Allie Bills. Uh, every single one of them seems to talk about as a young person, they disciplined themselves, got up in the morning and got going and got some work in before anyone else, uh, anyone else would be doing something. And I, you know, right. Dust, I just, that's something that seems so common yeah. that people, a time to make up ground on, on other people is to get going before other people get going and to get that skill work. Like it sounds like you disciplined yourself to do every morning, um, and Dustin talks often with, with athletes as we go around, and I do too, uh, about not losing the, the battle to the alarm clock. We call the snooze bar the lose bar, you know, <laughs> like, like that's when you, when you can really pick up ground on people. And so anyway, just, just wanted to point that out, listeners to this podcast, that it seems that everyone who is accomplishing these things we're talking about, they all seem to reflect on the morning. Yeah, which most, is awesome. <laughs> most most elite level people, I'm guessing, in whether it's sports or business or any profession, I don't think that uh, <clears throat> the best at their profession in the world are tinkering around with the snooze button every morning. I just don't envision Kobe Bryant or you know, or the business executive or whoever it is that they were uh, messing around with their their snooze button. Um, Tyler, I got a question for you about the sport light. Um, I, I remember you in high school. I was actually doing some basketball things with your dad when you were uh, in college. And he and I had some things we were doing together. So I knew TJ a little bit more. Um, but I do remember you in, uh, in high school. I remember actually talking to you once because I was trying to talk you into playing football when you were a sophomore or junior <laughs> in high school. I kept hearing how, yeah. how great of a wide receiver you'd have been if you'd have if you'd have been a football player, but um, I wonder if you could talk a minute about, and you and I have met on this before on our, our message to kids and to parents about using that time in their life when they have that sport light on them. Now yours, you know, continued with you and got much brighter when you got into college and uh, you know, and, and then you probably, I'm guessing went through some periods of times, you know, maybe when you were overseas where you weren't, quite as recognized. I mean, I, I know you were playing basketball professionally, but you didn't grow up in that community in Italy or wherever. So, um, you know, locally, most people knew who you were if they were in the sports world. And you also, I believe, played one or two years with with Jim or Fredette, who had as bright a sport light on him for a time as any college athlete, you know, has, has had there for a year or so. Um, now, but that was all before social media was really is as prevalent as it is now. And so the sport light is brighter now. And so I'm wondering if you can try to put yourself back in the, in that time again, but imagine being in that time when everybody had a phone and was posting on Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter and everywhere, you know, what are the dangers of that? What dangers did you see happen to teammates or, or maybe that you had to be careful of? And what are some ways that we can teach our kids to use their sport light in a way to give back and help create better cultures in their schools and communities. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, I mean, I, I have a few, uh, 
a few different thoughts that, that come to mind. Uh, the first being, you know, anyone who ha- experiences a little bit of sport life, you know, you can you can take it one of two ways, right? You can either, you know, puff up your chest and be like, I, I'm man and I'm you walk around school like that and kind of brush people to the side or you can you can embrace it in a different way and and really be kind to people and treat people the right way and 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 use it to to do a lot of good and so growing up i i um i remember my grandma actually teaching me this that people won't always remember what you say but they they'll always remember the way that you made them feel and because i i mean i was a I had some sport life, but I, I was never the most outspoken. I, I was very quiet and in my shell. And, and so it, that created kind of a weird dynamic for me in high school. And people, I felt like people knew who I was, but I, I was very, very quiet. And, um, but that, that saying always helped me. It, you know, it doesn't really matter what you say, but it, it matters how you make somebody feel. And, you know, whether it's a smile or a look or saying hello or sitting down next to someone that also looks like they're quiet and in their shell and and having enough courage to open up and have a conversation with them. Or you see an opportunity to to step in to something. Maybe someone's not being treated the right way or has been disrespected. You know, those, those types of opportunities people never forget that stuff and you know sadly the the opposite of that is also true right in in high school and in college if if you if you you know treat someone the the wrong way or or brush them to the side they never forget that either and you just you never know where life's going to take you and where your paths are going to cross down the road and you just you you want that to be positive down the road. And it life's a lot better when someone comes up to you and says, Hey, I remember what you did for me in high school. And I, I was going through a hard time and you stood up for me in this, in this situation. And I've never forgotten it. Yeah. You know, people don't forget. I mean, we all have experiences in our life where someone has done that for us, whether it's a coach or a teammate or, or someone else in school, um, someone that was a friend when when we needed a friend, and and so I don't, I, the sport like to me is is you using that recognition um, the right way and treating people the right way, and everyone inside can recognize opportunities and know the the right thing to do, and it's not always easy. Most times, it's it's a a difficult situation it's hard to to do the right thing but you always feel better for for doing it and and it will pay dividends down the road for for choosing the right thing Tyler I love that because we do go around and speak to thousands of athletes and not all of them are outspoken outgoing you know people expect them to be because they're popular because of their position as an athlete in their school and and people love watching them play. And so sometimes I think people expect them to be this outgoing, you know, uh, gregarious type of personality, and they're not. But I love what you say, because that would help those who are like, like, it sounds like you were maybe a little more soft spoken that to concentrate on the way you make people feel around you is a is a great place to start. You don't have to say much to make someone feel like they matter and like they're noticed and like they're seen. And so I love that, that thought and the way you make, they'll never forget what you say, or I'm sorry, they, they may forget what you say, but you'll, you'll never say that saying one more time. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably forget what you say, but the, they, they'll never forget the way you made them feel. Right. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah, well, and, and when, when athletes are in the in the sport, like the way they make people feel is is magnified. You know, when you're the when you're the cheerleader at the school who chooses to 
say something cruel to another girl in your, you know, in the community or online or in a class or something, it's not just another human being said something mean to another human being. It's the cheerleader said something mean. And, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, the star basketball player, or the quarterback or whoever is, is doing this. And it just, the, the, it's almost like the, you know, the knife is a little deeper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's ample. And that's one of the things now that, you know, we're, we're really trying to get across to these kids. And it's not that it's not already discussed. I think I hope that coaches and parents discuss this with kids, but I tell, uh, I tell coaches that I, I talk with all the time that it's, it's not what we coach. It's what we emphasize. And it, it, it's not, you know, I can tell our, my kid or, or uh, someone I coach, I can tell them the things to do or the, the, you know, how to act, but do we emphasize it? Because if we don't, the athlete that makes the mistake and says or does something to make somebody feel a certain way, good or bad, that sport light is going to magnify and amplify that to a degree that they may, to your point, either later in life when they've been forgotten about on the basketball court or the football field or whatever, they will be remembered for either making me feel accepted and welcomed and, and, you know, feel, feel good about myself when I was around them, or did I feel nervous and afraid and, and cautious and uncomfortable when I was around that person? And, you know, that sport light's not on forever. I'm sure now in your life, you're, you know, you're, your people still know who you are, but, you know, to, to some of the younger generation, they don't know who Tyler Haas is like they might have 15 years ago. Um, but, in the time you were in it, Tyler, for what it's worth and, and watching you from a distance and knowing uh, your dad and, and TJ, um, you did a great job and uh, you, you did a lot of good and, and impacted a lot of people. No, thanks. Uh, that means a lot. We, I mean, it's a, it's a never ending process though. I mean, uh, wherever you are, it, there's constantly those opportunities. And I, I think, um, you know, one other thought that I had, uh, on on that subject, you alluded to this earlier. Is everything's amplified with social media, and really everything you do on social media has has an effect, right? And um, changing changing your mindset to be, I think, well, the positive interactions that I've had on social media are when I I proactively go out and try and do good things when I when I'm so focused on myself and who's commenting on my post and you know how what people are going to think about my post like I don't know I I start I start comparing myself to other people I start I start living in the past I start you know that's where the negative stuff creeps in is when I'm so focused on me but when I when I try and be positive and go out and and do good and hey, I'm I'm going to put a, a positive comment on this picture, and I'm going to like this person's photo. I'm going to send them a message. I haven't talked to them in a while. I'm I'm going to I'm going to put a post that tries to inspire, you know, others instead of trying to trying to you know puff my chest with an accomplishment or something like trying to proactively do good on social media. I don't know that that's just one thought that I had that really when I was in high school, I didn't have to deal with. And this is the youth have to navigate through that uh, nowadays. That's awesome, Tyler. I love that idea. Do you go to social media to try to help others feel seen and to feel better or to try to attract attention to yourself and see how others feel about you? Just that mindset of of the way we approach social media will help people use their sport light because a lot of the harm that youth do to one another right now is done on social media even subtly and mm -hmm. if they go to it trying to to bless and not impress they will impact a lot of people's lives for good that's that's an awesome principle to to sum up that so thank you so much well, everyone, thank you so much. And Tyler, thank you for joining the Sport Light podcast. We really appreciate you. This is a great example of using your Sport Light to, to help other people. And we sure appreciate you joining us today. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate, appreciate you guys. And this is awesome what you're doing. You guys are doing a lot of good. 
uh, in the world. And this, your message definitely resonates with a lot of people. And this, uh, congrats on all you're doing. Well, thank you, Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining the Sport Light Podcast. We encourage you to subscribe to it, to rate it, to leave leave a comment there, to help other people discover it, and to share it with other people. And we invite you to find our other social media platforms. We're on all of them. Just search especially for athletes and, and follow some of the messages that we share there and share them with other people. Thank you so much. Eyes up. Do the work. This has been the Sportlight Podcast from Especially for Athletes, sponsored by Coca-Cola. You can learn more about Especially for Athletes by visiting the website at especiallyforathletes.org. You can also learn more about the book, The Sportlight, by Shad Martin and Dustin Smith at especiallyforathletes.org slash book.